like that. So the duty of a good panel would be to provide ample light, good ventilation and adequate sanitation. Now this can be done in two ways. Again we go back to positioning of doors and windows. In case of light, it is always the positioning of windows. Now if you have if you have visited a factory and hmm. lighting forms an important aspect in planning of buildings. Now if you have gone to any factories, you will be finding a typical layout of that roof. So you will be seeing the factories may be designed somewhat like this. You might have drawn this figure during your childhood days. Now if you take into consideration why these factories are designed in this particular fashion because the factory size is very very huge and you cannot have windows on walls so that you will be getting enough light. So what we provide is windows in this vertical portion. This vertical portion we provide windows. Now this portion is facing north direction. As we have said earlier that from in the northern hemisphere we normally do not have sun rays coming inside the room. So we call these type of roof as north light roof. So you have only light, diffused light coming inside and the whole portion inside the factory is as if fully illuminated and you don't require any sort of artificial lighting. So that's why this arrangement of not light is a must. Similarly, we have ventilation. Now if you might have seen in these factories also, we have what we call it as say air ducts. Lower this, this lower portion if you take into consideration, there are what we call it as vents. And even up in over here, we have what we call it as vents. So whatever air which is there, which becomes a bit hot, is then taken away through these vents. And there is input of air from the sides of the walls. So all this arrangement, so whatever air is there, it comes inside and is taken through these vents. So there is ventilation being maintained inside the factory building. So in this particular manner, you will be finding that light and ventilation forms an important aspect in planning of a building. In some form, it is called as sanitation. In case of sanitation, the other part is cleanliness and sanitary convenience. Any building cannot be complete without provisions of what we call it as toilets or places to ease out. So from that particular point of view, placement of toilet blocks, having adequate light and ventilation forms an important aspect in design. The other aspect of planning, principle of planning is flexibility. Now flexibility is based again on furniture arrangement. Room sizes remain same, but you want to use the same room for different purpose. So maybe if it's a one room apartment, where during daytime it acts as a living room, whereas during night time it turns out to be a bedroom. So that flexibility should be there in planning. So the room size should be such that it can be used for both the purposes, both as living room as well as a bedroom in case of one bedroom apartment. Similarly, if you, in case of an educational institute, you want to convert a classroom into say a laboratory, then possibility of converting it into a laboratory should be there. So the room size remains same. We have flexibility in planning such that it turns out into a 
laboratory. In other words, even laboratory can be designed such that it can turn out into a conference room. We have in this particular clip that the laboratory which is there, maybe a say maybe a electronic or electrical laboratory, wherein the equipments are placed in the cupboards inside when not in use. But the furniture arrangement is such that over a period of time that can be turned or used as what we call it as a conference room or a discussion room or a panel room. So that convergent factor is there in case of flexibility. And flexibility forms an important aspect of planning. Next. Another principle of planning is circulation. It is movement space provided in a building. It can be of two types, horizontal circulation for movement on the same floor, vertical circulation for movement from one floor to the other by stairs, lift, ramps, etc. Now if you take into consideration circulation. Now if we have a big building and we have disposition of rooms somewhat like this. And we have entrance at this point. Then going down to each room would be possible through this passage. It would be possible to get down to this room, this room, this room, this room and this room simultaneously. Now imagine that the same arrangement we have the entrance in over here but the rooms are placed such that they are like this. Now if you enter in over here it will be possible for you to go here, here here, here and here provided there are doors provided. But it will be impossible for you to go in this room, similarly this room. For that you have to move around and come down to this place by providing door here or maybe provide a door here then go through this and come at this particular point. Similarly provide a door here, enter through this room and come to this point or for this room, provide a door here and have the circulation at this particular place. So movement of a person from one room to the other, it depends upon the circulation part. Now, in case of a room, if you want to move from one room to the other, also if you take into consideration, say maybe a room like this and we provide a door here. and another door here then it is possible for movement from this side of the room to the other side through this particular passage you are not disturbing this particular portion but if at all we have the position of door somewhere here then we will be cutting the room from one end to the other end and utility of this room would be reduced. So circulation or placing the doors and windows, so especially doors, would change whatever the circulation pattern is there and this circulation has to be efficiently designed. Elegance forms one more principle of plan. It is the effect produced by the elevation and general layout of the plan. As you might have seen in prospect, in prospect what we have seen is we try to see building from outside but we will be able to say that the building is good or bad depending on you remember the photo of Taj Mahal because of its elegance. Now this elegance makes what we call it as a permanent image in our memory and you remember that building just because it's beautifully designed. It looks elegant. So it forms a very important principle of planning and 
a very skilled architect would be able to design buildings such that they look very very good. Nowadays you will be finding that most of the buildings are just like glass houses. Though elegancy is coming up but the feature of stone, the feature of brick, the feature of the other elements are slowly being replaced by what we call it as glass and metal elements. So elegance of that building is being changed from one mode to the other. Economy. It is not a principle of planning, but an important factor that governs the overall development of building. It should not have any effect on planning principles discussed so far. So economy forms what we call it as a it's not a principle of planning, but without money you can't do any work. So unless and until you have money, then only you have be able to have a very good external exterior look. So you may make a building elegant only if we have proper amount of money. Otherwise, normal walls would be sufficient. So it all depends on economy as to how best you would like to develop your building. Okay. Practical consideration is one of the aspect or rather a principle of that. Now, uh, this can be said in different forms. It all depends on how the foundations of that particular area are there, what strength that building would be able to take, how the developments would take place. All these form what we call it as uh, the practical consideration. What are the bylaws of that particular area? How, uh, whether there is an approach road, whether there is say drainage arrangement, whether there is water supply arrangement, whether there is electricity, are there any power fluctuations? All these are practical considerations which decide the location of that particular building in that particular vicinity. So if all these amenities and facilities are there, proper approach, then only we will be able to locate a building in over there. Otherwise, cities won't have developed. You, there is ample space all over the earth. Anybody can have house anywhere. But without all these amenities and facilities, providing a house on a particular location would be difficult. Thank you.